Shalom family. Uh, the Bible talks about the strong delusion. As a matter of fact, it says that the Most High is going to send that strong delusion. And uh, the reason why he's going to send it, he actually says it right there in, in the passage. He says he's going to send a strong delusion so that people can believe a lie and be damned because they have not a love for the truth. So this is why he sent it. In other words, he said, I'm going to set you up. The Most High says, I'm going to set you up because you reject the truth, you reject knowledge, and you want to go about your own way. I'm going to send a strong delusion. The Most High is, is the one that you all call God, okay, or um, Lord or Jehovah, whatever. Okay, and all those names that I just named off too, including Jesus, um, those are part of it, okay. Because he, he gave some specific instructions in scripture throughout about his name, about his person, about his people, about his truth. And mo most of that is rejected by the very religion that claimed to love him the most. Now, I departed religion a long time ago. I decided that religion has no place in my life. Now, for some of you, you're like, oh my goodness, she's, she's, she's broken off. She's um, cast away and all of this. And notice I said religion, but for most of you, religion is your, is your lifeline. Now, my lifeline, on the other hand, is the Most High Himself. My love for Him, my worship of Him, and my obedience of Him, and the accepting of His truth. Not my own truth, not my pastor's truth, not my religion's truth, not my church's truth. You see, a lot of Christians, and I'm going to talk specifically about Christianity right now, because Christianity has been the one religion that spread itself around the world, literally, uh, with a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other. And unfortunately, those who have been victimized by this religion called Christianity, they've also been tricked into believing that the Bible itself is a Christian book. The, the, the Bible is not a Christian book, okay? That's the first thing. The, the Bible is an Israelite book. <clears throat> It was written by the children of Israel, okay? And um, other, other um, verses and books and passages are not um, directly um, by the ch children of Israel or should I say um, about them. There are other books that are specifically about things that have happened in ancient times. And so just to give you a little bit of um, understanding on what the Bible truly is, the Bible is a collection of um, stories and prophecies and accounts of things that happened back then, okay? Some of it is inspired by the Most High, but that's, a, that's another one of those um, things that the um, Christian church has, or Christianity has pushed to make you say that anything that's written in the Bible, I can't go against it, right? Now, let me clarify what I mean. When you say that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, okay? You're basically saying that I cannot um, refute anything that's in the Bible. I can't question anything in the Bible. And most people take their translation, in which a lot of people use the KJV or the King James Version, and they say that I can't go against anything in the Bible, you see, because they've been told that it is the inspired Word of God. Now, I'm going to prove to you that not everything in the Bible was necessarily the inspired Word of God, okay? Again, it's just written accounts of things in the past, in ancient times, written by, and most times, the children of Israel, the children of the Most High, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, when you look at the fact that Christianity pushes this inspired word of God thing, you'll hear something like that we are to obey the government, and that slaves are to obey their masters, and you say, well, see, that's the written inspired word of God, so I can't go against that. That very uh, phrase or those very um, ideas were used to justify doing what has been done in slavery, um, beating and killing and all these kind of things because they also told us that slaves have to obey their masters and fear them, you see. But the Most High said, don't fear any man because you should only fear him who could destroy your body and soul in hell fire. Don't fear him who could destroy your body, you see. So to just... To just go off saying that it's the inspired word of God, that was a trick. That's a phrase that's been put out there to bind you even further to the people who hijacked the Bible and called it a Christian book. It's not a Christian book. Now, 
let me think of another example of something that wasn't inspired, but it was simply just a story that was written in the Bible. Um, when we were get, getting the story about how um, one of the one brother actually raped his own sister, you see, um, there was another account where it was uh, showing how um, in Sodom and Gomorrah you had these filthy, dirty men who wanted the angels. They wanted to sleep with them. They wanted to know them in a sexual way, and um, and they were like, "No, not so. We're not going to send. We're not going to give you these holy, righteous men so that you can sleep with them." You see. Now again, that wasn't something that was inspired. That was giving an account of what happened during that time. You see what I'm saying? So to say that the Bible in its entirety is the inspired word of Yah, I'll put it to you this way. Prophecy, that's the inspired word of Yah. Everything written in text in the Bible is not inspired by Yah. For instance, there were some instructions given by Shaul, which, it, which most Christians call him or know him as Paul. Um, he even said in some of his passages, um, I say, not the Lord. Okay, there, your, your Bible says the Lord. I use the Bibles with um, the Hebrew translations or uh, restored names or restored words. So um, he would even say in his letters, this is me, not the Lord or not the master, not the most high. In other, in other words, he's letting you know these are my words. You see, these are not the words of the most high. This is how I feel. You see. So when you think of um, the, the strong delusion of Christianity, first, the first part of their delusion is to hijack the Bible as a Christian book. So the minute you say that you have cut yourself off from Christianity, the religion, you have all these Christians come attacking you saying that you're, you're, you're going to hell, that um, um, you've rejected the Messiah, you've rejected the Most High, you've re rejected spiritual things. I mean, they come at you at every angle when you live more by the Bible than they do. You see, um, I will say this, um, I'm going to tell you all what I am. I'm an Israelite according to the Bible of the tribe of Judah, okay, as is most so-called black people in America, but most of us don't know that. Most of us don't realize that we are truly um, the Israelites or the from the tribe of Judah specifically for us here in America. We don't realize this because um, those who founded Christianity which are the ones who enslaved us and beat Christianity into our brains, they told us we were something different. They told us that we were heathens and that they came over there, rescued us from the jungles of Africa and gave us some type of civility and, and, and gave us God. You see, that's what they tell us. And most of us, um, we put our thumb in our mouth and we say, thank you, Master. Thank you for, for giving me God. If it wasn't for you, I, I would still be a heathen uh, flicking flies out my eyes. See, most of us believe that history that has been given to us by people who hate us. Now, I'm not going to turn this into um, a people who hate us video because anybody who lives in this country knows it's obvious that something is going on that these people don't love us, right? But I'm trying to break down this religion, this, this religion that has captivated our people's minds, this strong delusion that has deluded you to the point of rejecting the truth entirely. Some of our people, when you try to come to them with the truth, I mean concrete evidence, I mean right there before their own eyes, right there in black and white to be read, to be seen, to be heard. Most of our people reject it. And that was one of the things that the Most High has always t said about the children of Israel, okay? That we reject knowledge. He said because we will re reject knowledge, he's going to reject us and our children. That's why you see in, in mass amongst our, our so-called African Americans or black people or Hebrew Israelites, okay? That's why you see so many of us rejecting the truth about who we are because we've been told that it doesn't matter you see and we've been told that being a lot of you you get on online you see videos of so-called Hebrew Israelites who are cussing and ranting and raving on the street corner spewing out hate against white people spewing out hate against the black woman you see all of that stuff and so you want to cut yourself off from your culture because of that now what about when Christians go about, I mean, you have people who call themselves Christians, people who have been Christians for centuries, okay? As a matter of fact, they are from the racial group who founded Christianity. Now, when, when you have the KKK spouting off anger, hate, rage, and violence against other people, how come you don't detach yourself from Christianity? You see? You see the double standard here? If you hear uh, people who are, who are identified as true blood Hebrew Israelites spouting off hate, 
and rage and all this stuff you you want to cut the whole um, heritage off but you don't do the same you don't cut off your religion of Christianity when you see Christians doing the same thing there have been Christians who for centuries have gone around this whole planet killing men women and children in the name of Christianity and yet you still hold it dear to your heart that's because you are a religious person you are not a person who truly loves the Most High now most of y'all get get angry when you hear people say that you see but the, even the Most High says it himself he said if you love me keep my commandments in which most Christians have determined within themselves that they don't have to keep his commandments they're saying look I know that you are the creator of the universe but I'm gonna do things my way I don't have to keep your commandments Most High I don't have to do what you say do you tell me to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy I say that's been done away with you said that your Sabbath is going to remain forever. I say, I don't believe you. You see, that's how Christians, now they may not utter those words with their own mouth, but they will rationalize within themselves because their pastor told them that they don't have to keep the Sabbath, that they don't have to um, um, not deal with graven images. You see, I was looking at a, a, a so-called rap video somebody had posted on Facebook this morning. It was a young rap singer. I don't know his name because I'm not really into that type of music, but this young man um he was singing a song to jc okay to jesus and in the song he had in the video he had a statue of a white jesus with blood running down and all this stuff and nails in his feet and hands and all of this right and, he, and throughout the video and he and this woman was in the video um, with her religious garb on and leading him somewhere and he's just singing all this different stuff black guy a black man with this white Jesus statue and he's praying to it to tell him to thank him for thanking this statue for letting him see another day you see Christians the Most High said that we are to have no graven images but again that's another one of those passages that you all said you know what um, God that's what you call him I don't call him that you say God you're wrong you say that I can't have any statues, and I say I can. If I want to have a graven image of a false Christ, Jesus Christ, this, this white man, I'm going to do that. And what are you going to do about it? I'm still going to call myself a Christian. I'm still going to disobey you, and I'm still going to go against your word. I'm still going to rationalize that it means something else. So when you say that I can't have any graven images, I've rationalized in my mind that I can. So essentially, you're saying that you're your own God. Okay, why even try to serve the God of heaven if you're going to change his image, change his name, go against his word. When his word says don't eat something, you say, I'm going to eat it. When his word says that this is an abomination, you're going to say, well, you know what? I don't believe it's an abomination. There are, there are so many things that this fake religion of Christianity has done. And, and people can't understand why in droves many are leaving. And see... You have confused this with the great falling away. You say, look, man, so many people are falling away from the truth. They, they leave in the church. You, you think that leaving the church is the great falling away. No, a lot of people who leave the church, the Most High is calling them out of these apostate churches. That's why they are leaving. Because even here again, let me give you some other things about Christianity, in which most of you know, because you sit right up under it and you justify it. But you got men who like to have sex with each other in their behinds, calling themselves um, gay Christians. They sitting all up in the church, doing all kinds of things, directing the choir, preaching, teaching, doing all kinds of things. And the Most High said that this is filthiness, it's an abomination. You see, all other kinds of things going up in the church. You got so-called youth pastors getting up in there, um, sleeping with the young girls, sleeping with the young men. But again, you Christians have said, don't judge him. But, but yet you will judge me and say that I'm wrong for just talking about this. I'm telling you what the Bible says we are not to do. I'm doing what the scripture says when it says we are to admonish one another daily while it is today. But in your mind, I'm judging. I can't judge anyone as it relates to where their soul is going to go. But I can tell you that these abominations and these wicked things that people are doing and trying to justify it because you say that the law is done away with the Most High, He's going to show everybody real soon that if you don't come out of this mess and be ye separate, you are going to be judged right with the wicked. If you're going to keep on justifying all of these evil, wicked deeds 
and, and literally telling the Most High, forget you. You're really telling him that you're your own God. You're telling him that you're going to have it your way. That this is a new have it your way religion. That's really what Christianity is, have it your way. Because the ways of the Most High, we don't go by that. He tell us one thing, we're going to do the opposite. And yet you call yourselves the representatives of the Most High. The prophets of old would have looked at you jokes and would have literally cast judgment on you right on the spot. Even the apostles, some of the apostles, when Ananias and Sapphira went about their little monkey business lying to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> one of them dropped dead. And when the wife tried to, when Sapphira tried to um, lie again, they said, the same people who carried your husband out of here is going to carry you out of here. See, they weren't playing back then. So a lot of Christians today, they would actually fall under that judgment that the prophets would speak on people and that the apostles would speak on people for lying, conniving, thieving, all kinds of things. So full of hate. Now, Christians claim that Yah is love, right? And that we are supposed to be like Him. And they don't understand what any of that means. Love has been pushed around and, and hustled around as an excuse to sin, as an excuse to do things your own way. It has been pushed around by Christians. And what's funny about these so-called Christians, most of them ain't got an ounce of love in their bodies. I've heard too many stories where a person would go to a Christian for help or some type of counsel or advice or even for forgiveness. And that Christian look at them like they got a, uh, got horns growing out of their head, reject them turn their back on them, take their grudges to the grave, uh, will cut you off in a heartbeat. I mean, cut you off so bad to where it would leave your heart wounded, right? But then they call themselves the representatives of the Most High. You see, of this God that is supposedly full of love. See, there's more than one side of the Most High, right? There's a part of Him that Christians want to deny. He is not just a God of love. And you have to understand what that God of love means, okay? Because this same God of love is coming back to destroy billions of people. He's going to cut them off and send them to hell. That's why the word says, hell hath enlarged herself. It's not enlarging herself so that it can receive trees and animals and bushes and, and rocks and stones. Hell is enlarging itself because so many wicked people are being born up on the earth daily. And see, you all want to determine who's wicked you don't want to use the scripture. You don't want to use the truth. Most Christians, they have a few verses that they like to shuffle around in their head to justify what they're doing. But when it comes down to sitting down, having a real um, breaking down of the scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept, that's when they cut and run. You see, you Christians cut and run when the, cause the truth is too hard to bear. Because the truth don't match the story that you've been told. The truth does not match the story that your pastor teaches. It does not. The scripture says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And Yahushua, the one that you all call Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto him but through Yahushua. No man comes unto the Father but through him. You see, now, Yahushua, the one that you call Jesus, he said he didn't come to bring peace to the earth. He came to bring a sword because he has to do some separating, you see. But you all want to bring out, bring out this narrative that's not even supported in Scripture, you see. We are supposed to turn away from our sins. What is sin? Most of you Christians don't even know what sin is. The Scripture says sin is the transgression of the law. Look it up, okay? Most of you don't even know that. Sin is the transgression of the law. What law? Hmm? What law? The law that you said we're no, no longer under. And as I've said many times in many videos, that you all claim that the law is done away with because you simply want to believe that Yahushua died so that you can be free from the law, so that you can be free to do whatever you want and say that as many times as I sin, he's going to forgive me. Well, his word says the, rate, the wages of sin is death. You see? So each and every time you justify your sins, you justify being a lesbian, a homosexual, an adulteress, a, a fornicator, an idol worshiper, a, um, a thief, a robber, 
L let me see one, one of those that people um, don't think is a sin. Anytime you justify eating shrimp and, and pork and catfish and elephant meat and dog meat and cat meat, I had to name those for a reason because many of you, when, when I got to cat, dog, and um, elephant and all that different stuff, you say, ooh, that's gross, we ain't supposed to eat that. Well, the first few things I named, we ain't supposed to eat that either. But somehow, because mainstream heathens have endorsed that as food, you go along with that. Now, had we been raised up eating elephant meat and monkey meat and giraffe meat and hmm, hippopotamus meat and hmm, hyena meat, had we been raised up eating those kind of things, uh, you would eat that too. But because the mainstream heathens have endorsed certain things, you consider that food. And you don't think there's anything wrong with eating it, right? But you would think it was something wrong with, with eating a big fat piece of um, hippopotamus meat. You would think that was wrong. Why is it wrong? Says who? The law says it's wrong. Just like eating pork is wrong. And sometimes it's, it's like talking to a brick wall because people are going to justify the things that they want to do. We have all, all been there at some point, but at some, at some point, it's time for you to awake out of your sleep. We can't remain in this slumber state that we're in. We can't make, remain in the seat of do nothing as relates to righteousness and holiness. And, you know, everybody want to everybody use the Bible that was written by my ancestors. They want to use that to justify all kinds of wrongdoing. And these are the reasons why the Most High sent the strong delusion. He said, okay, since you don't want the truth, since you don't want to hear what I'm trying to tell you to save your soul, I'm going to send you a strong delusion. And you're going to believe a lie. And you're going to be damned because you had not a love for the truth. And so when you stand before him on Judgment Day, he says, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, or Master, Master, haven't I done all these things in, in your name and in your name cast out devils? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And with that, I will say shalom.